Hey guys, happy Monday. Hope everybody is doing well out there today. Uh, for quite a while now, we've been talking about Open Media Vault and that sort of thing. And we've really focused on setting up uh, primarily desktop server uh, scenarios here, using an x86 platform to uh, to install most of our applications and that sort of thing. Uh, and I've had a lot of people request uh, Raspberry Pi specific content. So I actually wanna start that series. In fact, over the weekend, I, I put out a poll on the channel uh, asking if you guys would, would rather see me do more Open Media Vault stuff with Raspberry Pi or more uh, just standard operating system like Ubuntu, uh, setting up a home server that way. And uh, it was about a 60-40 split after a few hundred votes. Uh, and you guys are, are definitely encouraged or encouraging me rather to continue to use Open Media Vault for these tutorials. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, start a whole new series here using Open Media Vault, but on a Raspberry Pi instead. Now, I want to be just straight up front about this. Uh, basically, this entire series was uh, sponsored sponsored by uh, Argon40. Uh, they actually provided me with a couple of these Argon40 uh, M.2 cases. Uh, these are actually really neat. This is what we're gonna talk about today in this video. Uh, also, uh, Sabrent was cool enough to send over a two terabyte M.2 NVMe drive, as well as an enclosure for that drive. So we can have a couple of terabytes of external storage for our setup. So. Um, I think that kind of covers everything that I wanted to cover there. So let's jump over to my desk and take a look at setting up the Argon 40 M.2 uh, Raspberry Pi 4 case. So here we are on my fairly dirty desk, thanks to my cats. We're taking a look at everything that we're going to use to set up this Argon 1 M.2 case. Uh, so this is actually the bottom that I'm holding right here, uh, where I'm going to put in this Silicon Power uh, 28 or 2280 SSD. Now, the reason they went SSD over NVMe, I was told, is because the NVMe drives put off more heat and they, the SSDs put off less heat. So uh, they, they did that as a temperature saving measure. Now, I will say that this this uh, drive is something that I purchased. Uh, originally, Sabrent provided me the two terabyte drive. I was just gonna use that, but then I found out about the SSD and VME debacle. So I went ahead and bought this silicon power drive for myself. Uh, here is the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig model uh, that I'm plugging in the Argon 1 expansion board into. Uh, this is gonna be a pass through for audio and video. Uh, what I do like about this is that it's got full size HDMI ports for both uh, video one and video two. So the next thing that we're gonna to wanna to do here is actually uh, in this little bag, there are uh, some accessories. A couple of those accessories that we're going to want to put on here are uh, the thermal pads that they've included. Uh, if you end up not having these or need to swap something out or whatever, you could use thermal paste, but they've included some thermal pads. So that's what I'm going to use here uh, to put on a couple of uh, these aluminum plates that are actually built into the case. They make full contact uh, with the GPU and the CPU, I believe. And they do a really, really good job of transmitting heat. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get those on there and then we can actually put uh, the Raspberry Pi in the top of the case. Now, what's nice here also is you'll notice that there is a little like 20 or 30 millimeter fan there uh, that's moving air around inside the case. It actually plugs directly into those GPIO pens and is controlled there. There is some software that you can install that will allow you to control uh, the fan curve to a certain degree uh, where you can have it either always on or you can have it uh, adjust the fan speed based on temperature. Uh, at least with a couple of settings there uh, and it's really easy to use and set up. So you will wanna make sure that you take your micro SD card out as you will not have access to it once the case is put together. Uh, but there you go, that's it uh, all lined up. All of the GPIO pens are plugged into the case and you will have access to that uh, on the top of the case. And I'll show you that here in just a couple of moments. So now we're gonna go ahead and secure uh, the internals of, the, of this setup uh, here just real quick. I'm gonna put in three screws. I really should have put in four. Uh, in fact, right here, you can see this isn't quite lining up quite right. Uh, so I'll go ahead and fidget with this just a little bit uh, to get everything to line up, to get those holes to line up, and then we can get those screws put in there. Uh, like I said, there is one screw that I missed. Uh, it's not a huge deal. The three that I put in are more than enough to keep everything stable. It's not like I'm playing football with this thing. It's just gonna sit on my desk. So three screws, uh, better than no screws, but I don't think four screws is quite necessary for what we're doing here. And then there is that top screw, like I mentioned, kind of right there in the middle, uh, just directly above that, that, that I didn't put in. Again, we don't need it. So uh, at this point, we can actually go ahead and put the bottom of the case on. Uh, it just kind of sits in place there. Uh, and we'll put some screws in, and then we will go ahead and connect the, uh, the USB 3 bridge that connects the SSD to the Raspberry Pi. 
And here are the feet. It does come with four little feet. Uh, I encourage you to put those on uh, just because it helps keep things in place. If you've got something sitting in there that might move it around, that helps it stick to the, your surface it's a little better and keeps you from scratching up anything that, uh, that it might be resting on. But of course, if you take a look at my desk, I don't really care. Uh, again, I've got jerk cats that like to get my desk dirty there. So uh, we'll go and get this last foot on there and then we'll go ahead and put that, uh, that USB three bridge in uh, again to connect the, the SSD to the Raspberry Pi. And there's what it looks like when it's all put together. It looks just like the original, uh, but of course now we've got that SSD in there. And like I said, you will have access to uh, the, uh, all the GPIO pins if you want access to those. And of course, because we're setting up a home server, we're gonna need some storage. So uh, this is the Sabrent section of things. This is the external enclosure that they sent over. One of them, they actually sent me two. Uh, this is the one we're gonna use for this. Uh, that, uh, that little uh, adapter there is kind of neat. It's actually magnetic. You don't have to do any screws or anything like that. And that little plastic bit actually sits in the nook uh, at the end of the uh, NVMe drive. Uh, here we've got uh, a built-in thermal pad. Of course, if you needed to, you could take this off and replace it. I, I would definitely not use thermal paste here. I would con continue to use thermal pads, but uh, here is the uh, two terabyte rocket drive that Sabrent sent over. Great little drive. I've actually got one of these uh, in my system uh, right now and uh, they're great drives. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this plugged in here. Uh, luckily it's keyed, it'll only go in one way and uh, here we can see uh, that little plastic nub that sits right in there and then just clicks right into place with a magnet. And of course, we'll just fidget with it, make it make sure it's all the way seated properly. And uh, luckily also the, the, the way this cover is set up, it's also keyed. And of course I immediately screwed it up. There's actually uh, printed on there. You can see it, maybe you can see a couple of little white dots that tell you, hey, these ends go together. Give that a little uh, quarter turn and it's all locked in place and it is not coming apart. Very, very sturdy setup right there. Okay guys, so there you go. There is the hardware setup that we're gonna use for our upcoming videos. Now, I've already done a video on how to install Open Media Vault on a Raspberry Pi. So we're going to kind of skip that. I'm gonna to link to that in the description down below. I'm also gonna put that in the playlist for this video series. So again, we are going to skip how to install Open Media Vault on a Raspberry Pi because I've already done that video, but then we'll pick up from there. We'll start installing some applications and that sort of thing in upcoming videos. So uh, with that being said, I wanna give a big shout out to both uh, Sabrent and Argon for sending over their hardware, both the uh, uh, Raspberry Pi case as well as the M.2 NVMe drive and the enclosure. And of course, Kanakit sent over that eight gig Raspberry Pi 4. And of course, none of this would be possible without that. So uh, thank you to those three companies. I'll have links to all of their stuff in the description as well. Uh, I also have links to everything where you can buy all this stuff and follow along if you want to. So while I'm giving big shout outs to everybody, I would also like to give a shout out to my patrons. Uh, thank you guys for supporting me month after month. Really do appreciate that and what you guys help me do every month. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Also, if you wanna become a patron, there will be links in the description down below where you can check out the different uh, levels of patronage I've got set up presently. Uh, so definitely check that if you're interested. But with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.